Welcome back to the chat. If you pay any attention to health headlines, you know there's a lot of disagreement in the medical community about when and how often women should get mammograms. A new study finds four of five doctors still recommend annual mammograms for women in their early 40s despite guideline changes that have pushed back the age for yearly breast cancer screenings. Joining us now to discuss, we welcome our medical contributor, Dr. Ali Kizrayan, who's wearing the same suit he wore last week. Probably. Or maybe not. We don't know. No, I'm kidding. I don't know if you are. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. Call them out. <laughs> I am just excited to be here to fight for the power of women. Yes, yes. And we love that you do that. We love that you look out for our health as well as you do. So, all right, so let's talk about the whole mammogram screening issue. You know, the guidelines are that, you know, you don't need to get them every year, yet this new study says four out of five doctors are saying, no, we're recommending that. So why are these guidelines saying that if the doctors aren't agreeing with this? I'll tell you, this, this will kind of highlight a little bit of the confusing theme that's out there with, you know, we'll talk about prostate cancer a little bit later on. These, these guidelines continually emerge and they're dynamic because we're constantly looking at data. We're looking at uh, and seeing what's going on and, and we're trying to emerge and change to give better information of the risks and benefits of doing all these things. There's, this is always going to remain controversial and you see with breast cancer, how many times over the past few years have we discussed breast cancer screening? Yeah. yeah. You know, there's always yeah. a study coming up. So do doctors not believe these guidelines? Who, who comes up with the guidelines, first of all? So there are many different organizations. You know, one thing that gets a lot of attention is the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, which is, which is a, a group of physicians. They're not uh, breast surgeons. They're not oncologists, and, but, but they look at the breadth of the data to come up with guidelines. But if you look at the guidelines for breast cancer, there are many different organizations and there's not one universal guideline oh, okay. that, that's out there for everyone to follow. So for example, uh, the, uh, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recommends biannual mammograms starting at 50 and going till 74. The American Congress of Obstetrician and Gynecologists actually recommends starting at 40 and getting annual uh, screening mammography. The American uh, Cancer Society recommends uh, that you have the option to start at 40 and then after 45 that you should get regular screening mammography. Wow. That's and really confusing yes. for women out there. Yes. How, what do we do? So if you look at this, here's where the controversy uh, lies, is that if you start getting screening mammography early, the breast is a bit more dense. So when the breast is more dense, uh, it looks more bright, so it's wider on a mammogram. So if a mammogram, or it's an x-ray, so if anyone's looked at an x-ray, you can imagine there's darkness in the background and then things are bright. Everyone kind of thinks of x-rays as, as bone against some dark colors. With a mammogram, as you can kind of see in the, in the images here, you can see a very, very bright image on one end and then there's the other one that is a little bit less, less bright white things with a darkness in the background. So as people age, you have less dense, thick, kind of more robust white tissue. And so it's easier to pick up nodules and masses. So if you're getting mammography in your 30s, in your 20s, in the earlier ages, it may be very difficult to pick something out or to differentiate normal dense mm. tissue from an abnormality. Okay. So the concern becomes you're going to get more and more false positives, you're going to increase anxiety, you're going to do unnecessary biopsies, they're going to be negative, and then so you have to keep following that. Could you create scar tissue? Can you create this process of negative tests after negative tests after biopsy, and then you create this pathway of unnecessary tests and anxiety? I actually went through this last year. Um, my doctor felt a lump, sent me for a mammogram, and I read my health insurance benefits to reflect that mammograms were covered went, got the mammogram, everything's fine, thank God, but then th I got thousands of dollars worth of, of bills later, wow. and it's because it wasn't preventive because they felt a lump, and so I, that kind of deterred me, like, well, in the next 10 years, mm -hmm. if, you know, they feel something else, am I not going to go get it checked right. because I don't want thousands of dollars of bills, and yeah. it's probably just a false yeah. reading, yeah. you know, it, it makes you think. And that's another negative of possibly starting to do screenings a little bit too early mm. is that are you going to potentially deter someone that could have benefit in the future from screening? Now speaking uh, of that, now yes, a regular doctor would tell you to have a screening every couple of years. As opposed well, to that irregular doctor that you said? As opposed <laughs> to going to the cooch doctor, he tell you to go every year-ish to, to, to get it. So why is there a difference in what your gynecologist tell you versus what your primary care Absolutely. will tell you? Absolutely. So this is a little bit of a controversy of which organization 
information tells you what to do. And so we hope that a balance of approach uh, can help us have a little bit of a, of a balance. I think one thing that one can take away from this is your own personal discussion, and this is a very, very uh, hip kind of uh, uh, jargon in the world of medicine now is shared decision making, mm. where you personalize your care with a discussion with your primary care physician or your gynecologist, where you, you see where you sit and then with what you went through, you can talk to your gynecologist or your primary care physician, is here is my personal history of what I went through. And you see where you, your personal uh, opinion is. So if you want to have the most aggressive uh, screening, you start at 40 and you do annual mammography to make sure you don't miss anything, understanding that there could be a possibility of a, of a false positive mammogram that you have to follow, but you have a much, much lower risk of missing a breast cancer. Um, on, on the other end, if you start screening at 45, you could potentially have a lower risk of a false positive, but also a low risk of missing something. So you have to balance uh -huh. all this. Now, group said it's very important. People with a high, and those, that recommendation is for average risk. So if someone right. has a high risk of right. breast cancer, people with a family history of uh -huh. breast and ovarian cancer, especially if it's less than, uh, younger than the age of 50, uh, uh, you want to be mindful. People of an Ashkenazi Jewish uh, descent, you want to be mindful. If someone has a, fam it's, it's a, 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 a family history or it's a group of people that have a higher risk of getting breast cancer. Oh. Uh, so, so they have to be very mindful of the possibility of, of breast cancer running in that group, that population. Uh, you want to be mindful of people that have a family history of bilateral breast cancer. Mm. Male breast cancer. That's yes. one percent of breast cancer. About that. You can't forget about that. So mm -hmm. that's something. Uh, and then also, people have a, a personal history of breast cancer. You want to be mindful. You don't forget about the other side. Or a history of you've had a biopsy before that has had uh, atypical hyperplasia. Mm -hmm. So you want to be mindful that you 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 follow that closely. In those people, you want to start screening earlier at 40. Mm -hmm. And be mindful of another kind of little subtlety. If someone has had breast cancer in your family, you want to start screening yeah. 10 years before the youngest age of someone wow. in your family. So if you're mom had breast cancer at 45, you want to start screening at 35. Oh, okay. Wow. Very important information. So these are Im important right. things for you right. to find out so you have a shared decision making process and that you personalize this mm -hmm. to you. Uh, and so you don't go through a process where you just think, oh, this is so confusing, let me not do it because no one knows what they're right. doing. Right. Personalize it to you and have a conversation with both your gynecologist and your primary care Okay, physician. so let's move on and talk about prostate cancer. You mentioned that earlier because there are some new changes in how doctors recommend you get tested for prostate cancer. U.S. Preventative Services Task Force had been telling people not to get blood tests for cancer. Now they say it's a decision you should make with your doctor, which is what you're talking about with the whole breast cancer thing. So what is the deal with these blood tests? So this is a PSA screen. So as a urologist, uh, we recommend getting a PSA test and a digital rectal exam because we believe that it, it helps save lives. Um, and digital. what? Yeah, so, so you do a rectal exam, you feel the prostate. If there's a nodule, we recommend getting a biopsy. Uh, so what the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, same organization, in 2012 recommended was not to do screenings for prostate cancer, uh, giving it a grade D recommendation, which means that the harms outweigh the benefits. And they cited things based on two studies, a European study uh, and an American study, the PLCO trial, citing that um, the harms of screening outweighed the benefits and saying that we overdiagnose and overtreat prostate cancer. Mm. Okay, saying that a lot of men get the PSA test, then they do biopsies, find cancer, they get treatments, and then they get erectile dysfunction and screening, uh. and more people are diagnosed with prostate cancer, which is a slow growing cancer, and so the cancer wouldn't kill people, and we're treating them for a cancer that really is very slow moving, and we're not finding benefit. What we found since 2012 as urologists was that we are seeing about an 18 to 20 percent decrease in the amount of men that were they're getting screened. That translated to almost like a, about a 30 percent decrease in the amount of cancers that was being diagnosed. Those are big numbers. Big numbers. 64 percent of primary care physicians weren't doing rectal exams anymore. And then wow. we began to see in studies as early as 2013 see a paradigm shift where we're seeing more advanced prostate mm. cancer, more aggressive prostate Boom. cancer, and more metastatic prostate yeah. cancer. And so that becomes really dangerous because the almost 40% decrease in prostate cancer specific death. So people dying of prostate cancer since we started screening with a PSA test, that paradigm is beginning to shift because people aren't screening. 
that becomes even more important for the younger guys. Sure. So because they are diagnosed with more aggressive disease and people with a family history of prostate cancer, and especially African American men, which we know they're diagnosed earlier, mm -hmm. uh, they're twice as likely to die of disease and they have more aggressive disease when it's diagnosed. So if, if these guys don't get diagnosed, it's very dangerous. And imagine this, so we're guys. We're not as proactive as women to have these discussions like you're having, let me right. get screened or not. And you can see even in this study. So there's all this controversy for breast cancer screening and still, like you mentioned, four out of five physicians are still saying, you know what, all this data where, where there's controversy, we're still going to start screening for breast cancer at 40, at, at 40 years of age, between right. 40 and 44 years of age. For prostate cancer, there's one recommendation and we're seeing all these changes of not screening for prostate cancer and men really go with it. So with this, what, what the concern becomes is what do we do? This great C recommendation, which means the way I kind of simply say it, they, before they say don't screen for PSA, now say go see your doctor, they basically said shared decision making. Go, to, go talk to your doctor about the risk and benefits of screening and see how it applies to you because they found that same studies they looked at before, when they followed it for five years more, especially the European study, they found a 20% improvement in survivorship in the screening arm and a 30% decrease in metastatic disease. Wow. So when they followed these people for a longer period of time, there was benefit in the screening arm. And another thing was important. Nowadays, about 40 to 45% of the prostate cancers that we diagnose, we don't treat low risk, low volume right. prostate cancer, wow. we can monitor. Right. So that wow. changes that Didn't paradigm that. of over yeah. diagnosis, mm -hmm. over treatment. Not all prostate cancer di that we diagnose need treatment at the time that we find it. Mm. So that changes things yeah. where we can be more personalized and individualized with our therapy. We're doing better in the prostate cancer that we can find, how we find it, how we diagnose it. So that changes things. So not everything is treated the same way. So same as we look at with breast cancer, we yep. can do the same thing with prostate cancer so we can personalize and individualize Which care. sounds like it awesome thing to personalize it for you because everybody everybody is different yep. every person is different. every Absolutely. cancer is different so talk to your right. doctor about PSA screening especially in your 40s study after study shows that screening with prostate with PSA in your early 40s is the most predictive of your prostate cancer risk for you personally and so have that discussion with your physician because it can save your life all right that great well thank you so much for joining sure. us Dr. Kazrian this medical contribution furnished by Kazrian Urology you can hear more from Dr. Kazrian on his weekend radio show the conversation Saturdays on WOKB from 5 to 6.